solemnly pledge myself before God to pass my life in purity, to practice my profession faithfully, to endeavor with loyalty, to assist the physician in his work, to devote myself to the welfare of those patients committed to my care. That's the oath I took, Senator. Just like the doctors do, I took an oath, the nurse's oath. You have to understand, nursing was my life. We do understand and respect that, Miss Everett. And uh, we do appreciate very much your testifying before us today. I hope you understand that the sole purpose of this committee is to discover the truth about the public health service program commonly called the Tuskegee Study. That's what we all want, sir. Good. Now, I understand you worked on the program from the beginning. From the very first in 1932, up until I retired a few years ago, nearly 40 years. Oh, That's longer than I've been in the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Miss Evans, how did you feel about the study? Our patients got the best doctrine they ever had in their life. But according to the testimony so far, Miss Evers, <laughs> there are ways in which this study sounds like some sort of Nazi experiment was established at Nuremberg that experimentation you without informed... You could, whatever. There was an epidemic with all that syphilis going around. Senator, life was always hard in Macon County, but the Depression made it worse. You just have no idea what it was like down there back then. We've heard a lot of testimony, Miss Evers, from some of the patients, from other nurses, and from your supervisor, Dr. Brodus. Dr. Brodus is a fine doctor who cared, Senator. I don't care what y'all say about him now. I was honored to serve under that man. Are we just gonna let him choke to death? But what do you suggest, nurse? We've tried digitals, we've tried mercurial diuretics. Maybe I should just cut them open and drain them. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take it out. It was a farming accident, wasn't it? Yeah. He was playing on the mule. Got away from him, kicked him. Crushed his chest. His heart just won't work. 
Is that fluid on the pericardium? I'll have to notify his parents. What made you think, boy, that you were old enough to handle a mule? This bed clothes are wet. I'm going to get dry ones. No. No, wait a minute. Get away from him. What? Professor, I want you to get me a syringe with a large bore needle. Now! What did I say? Cut him open and drain him? Maybe I knew what I was talking about. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt you, son. I just wanna take a look at your chest. That's all. I just wanna take a look. And you take Nurse Ever's hand. Yes. And you squeeze it tight. You can't hurt me. You don't get much of a chance to hold on to a pretty lady's hand like that, now do you? I'm not gonna hurt you, son. Am I nice? No, doctor. Uh -huh. That's it. You gotta trust the doctor. Boy. You trust him and you'll be up and around in no time. That's true. I don't want you with that mule no more. What's that mule's name? Hang on. What's his name? Tell you, we don't have white doctors at Tuskegee. The only way you've been carrying on. I was carrying on. I was just being appreciative. He saved that boy's life. Well, what's he supposed he a... to do? He's a doctor, ain't he? Wait on people doing what they're supposed to do and see how long you wait. You always did like saving people. I didn't save him. Dr. Broder saved him. I was only doing my nursing job. Not to be saying only, neither. You're a nurse. That's more than just a job, so don't you go making light of it. I'm not, Papa. Unless you want to end up cleaning some white lady's toilet like your mama had to do all no, of her life. No, I have had my share of that. Hand will be out in 10 minutes. We didn't slave to send you to a nursing school for that kind of life. No, Papa, you did not. All right, then. All right, then. Come in. Yes, Doctor. Oh, goodness, Everest. Are you still checked out to drive the district office car? I've got a new job for you. You need me to go somewhere? Well, if we hurry, we can uh, we can make it on time. There's somebody very important that we have to pick up on the bus. Trip? Yes, I did. Welcome to Tuskegee. How are you? Fine. It's your pleasure seeing you. You too. Uh, bags? Oh, yes. Here. Uh, let me give you a hand. Thank you. Sure. Oh, I forgot my manners. Dr. Douglas Nurse Evers. I do. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. Dr. Douglas, I think you're going to find that Nurse Evans will be a tremendous help to you. Well, we will need all the help we can get. And luckily, we've got all the funding we need from a uh, foundation in Chicago. Everyone's aware of what a plague syphilis has become, and we're determined to stamp this thing out. But this problem is just for the Negroes in Macon County. Yes, and that's why Tuskegee was chosen. It's one of the few all-Negro hospitals in the South, in a county that's almost 80% colored. Now, you may not know this, but you people have one of the highest concentrations of syphilis in the country. It's, it's nearly 35%. Uh, we know it, Doctor. I mean, our, our wards are filled with syphilis because the white hospitals won't let them in. Negroes also have more pellagra, pneumonia, and TB. But there is no statistical basis for the belief that syphilis is a Negro disease any more than it was a French disease in the last century or Russian or Polish before that. Now, don't get me wrong, Doctor. I'm not one of those that believe that Negroes are inherently more susceptible because of some, uh... 
I mean, I voted for Roosevelt. First, of course. Give them Wasserman's to make sure. I'll take that, Doctor. That in itself would be a huge undertaking. Great pains for great rewards, right? You don't intend on telling them they have syphilis, do you? Well, if they have it, we'll have to tell them something, won't we? Well, maybe we better not use a word they never heard before. That'd just scare them off, Doctor. So, what are we supposed to tell them? Well, just tell them that there's something the matter with their blood. I have to say, exactly. They all know about bad blood. She's right. That's what they call anything that's the matter with it. The main thing is we have to make them understand we only want to get them well. And indeed we do. I do, you do, and the government does. We're going to find a cure for this disease. We're going to stop at nothing less. They doing this for the Negro? Got to be a hoodwink in there someplace. Don't go always looking for the underside girl. But I'm always finding it. These men are being treated for a very bad disease, and that's more than anybody else has ever done for them. So don't you go making a mockery of it, Betty Parsons. Now, look, you're taking my place here on the ward, so you hop to it. You keep your eye on old Mr. Blakely, because you're going to think he's taking his medicine, but he's hiding his pills under his tongue. And that new man has come in. You're checking for a fever every two hours, and make sure you don't go spiking on you. Listen to me giving you advice. Come here, girl. You're going to do just fine. But now, don't go getting too many ideas of your own self. You listen to your doctors, because they know. Yeah? Right here. Sure look good in your new uniform, Eunice. Hey. Like you was born to it. It's going to be a great thing. Good luck. I see you. It was a great thing. The government had never done nothing like that for us before. It was the dawn of a new day. And I was the one they had chose to spread the word. I have been sent. I have been sent. I have been sent here by the government. The United States government. Yes, I have. Up there in Washington. And the government is sending us the best medicine to treat anybody in this county who needs it. When did that ever happen? Hmm? Oh, something good is starting up for a change. Something new, and this time, we all gonna be part of it. You have not seen the health you gonna see in Macon County, Alabama. Y'all gonna come see me? When you get there, you will see me. Don't worry. You gonna come see me, sister? You gonna bring that big, pretty baby with you? You gonna come see me, sister? Yes, I think so. Come. The way the government was thinking, Mr. Crux, is that you might have field hands, don't even know you got bad blood. They just feel kind of sickly a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And that, sir, is not good for your cotton business. Mm. Stand the reason. A sickly field hand ain't gonna pick near about much cotton as a healthy one. So uh, we get them better, and then it's just helping them, it's helping you. Which is my concern, too, because we're here for the whole community. Yes, ma'am. Dirt coat, and you ain't got a damn to your name. If you ain't seen a doctor in your whole life, if you got bad blood, you get treated for free. Now, ain't that something? I'm asking you, ain't that something for government to be doing? And for the color? Oh, we got us a whole new deal here. Now, who coming to see me? Raise up your hand. Who coming to see me? Good to see you. Hello. Miss Evans. Ooh, yeah. Good morning. Thank you, man. Hey, what's your name? Flyway. Flyway, then. Hey! Hello! Hello! Turn it into a semester.
the mark of a born dancer. Excuse me, I'm Nervous Evers. I'm the person you're here to meet. Thank you for coming. We here on the count of Mr. Kirk. Now, he told us we better. Uh, he sent you too? No white man sent me. A colored man. A fine, important colored man, Dr. Samuel J. Brodus from Upper Tuskegee, to offer y'all some free doctrine. Free, huh? You say free? Yeah. Doctrine is fine and free as any you can get anywhere. Yeah, but see, we ain't sick. That's right. Yeah. You said anybody that's sick be able to dance like this? Now, that's a mighty fine movement, but that still don't mean you ain't got bad blood. How you know we got bad blood? Well, that's what we're gonna find out, ain't it? Been a long time since I sat here. This way you done your school? Mm-hmm. I sat rat smack dab in front of Miss Titus. Look. She ain't like us doing that, but everybody did it. <laughs> Just had to be careful not to get caught. Yeah. You, sir? Your name? Wait, hold on. Why the government helping us all of a sudden? What? They got a world coming they gonna need us? Well, they have a whole new view of things, a, a kind of people point of view. And it's coming straight down from President Roosevelt. Well, I ain't scared to get my name. My name is Willie Johnson. Really? W-I-L-L-E Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Hardman. Hardman? Hardman Bryan. Bryan. Yeah? Well, I'm, I'm Ben. Ben. I'm Big Ben Washington. Big Ben Washington. See, we're a group, the four of us. You looking at the next one is in the Macon County Victrola Jilly competition right here. That's right. That's right. Mm. Yeah, but see, just cause I give you my name, that don't mean I'm coming back for no treatment. I just had me an idea. I know how I can get the government to take y'all to that competition. How you gonna do that? I drive you there in my government car. After we stop off at the hospital and get your free tests and your free hot lunches. Hey, free lunch. Wow. All right. <laughs> free lunch? Yep. You got to fatten you up for the kill. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she almost had one. I got you. <laughs> okay, now y'all say it's four of you in this here group. Where are the four? Well, he ain't coming. No. See, he don't believe anything Mr. Kirk said could be good for the color. He work for Mr. Kirk? No, he don't work for Mr. Kirk. It's Caleb. He work for himself. Well, this ain't got nothing to do with Mr. Kirk. You dealing with the government right here. Caleb? Humphreys. Caleb Humphreys. Caleb Humphreys. Sat right behind me. You Josh it now. I will never forget that boy as long as I live. He made me so miserable, pulling on my hair and sticking my pigtails in the ink well. I couldn't do nothing with him. That sounds just like Caleb. <laughs> Don't sound like Caleb. <laughs> he won't come in for treatment. Not Caleb. Mm -mm. Well, I've been waiting 20 years to put some size on that boy. I don't exactly make us even, but it's something. Eunice Evers. Don't say you don't remember me. Eunice Evers. I, I remember you. You were the smart one. Remember what you used to do to me? You was a girl. That ain't no good reason. You still ought to be ashamed. Excuse me. Uh, hey! Hey! Come here. Carry this feed out to your mama, young. Corina! Corina! Almost done! Yeah, 
Yeah, come then. Oh, you have a fine looking family. Oh, my brother's wife's kids. I'm just living here helping out. What's this about you not coming for treatment? Trust no government. As far as this doctrine is concerned, I'm the government. What you got to say about that? You trust me? Or you still want to pull my hair? Both. They came in with me, and so did the other ones I talked to, and the ones they talked to. Did they come on foot in the owner's truck? Any way they could, they came in for treatment. Sorely needed treatment. Good morning. Oh my God. There's so many. I have no idea. Welcome to Macon County, Doctor. Well, we better start another line. There are a lot of men here in need of care. Yeah. If I could have all the young men down on this end, please file into this room and form two new lines. Thank you. Morning. Morning. As a senior, you got Oh, that stuff you give me sure did the towel. Oh, you did the trick, Miss Everett. Well, we're going to get everybody in Macon County. Well, you'll see. Next group. Ma'am, I see you getting even with me for uh, pulling your hair, huh? <laughs> you ain't getting out that easy, but give me your finger. Ah, yeah. it's all right. All right. Hold it up. Hi, man. No, no, uh, Miss Evans, I don't want to get my blood took. Uh, I got a wife. I got a wife. I got. I'm still young, and I got obligations. The obligations? You know, to my wife. <laughs> Family obligations. <laughs> so I just can't have my blood took. You know Fred Milson down at Alma? Works in the sawmill. He got seven going on eight children. He been giving his blood for six years, and his obligations is doing just fine. <laughs> well, I sure hope you're right, Miss Evans, because oh, that... I would say it if it wasn't so. Could you step out here for a second? Okay. Doctor? Yes. Would you excuse me? I'd like to speak with the men. Sure, right now. Gentlemen, there seems to be some confusion. Let me explain what we're checking for. There is a germ that infects the genital area, resulting in a temporary and painless, but highly contagious penile ulceration. Now, this ulceration will disappear as the disease becomes non-contagious or, or latent. And this, uh, this latency can last for up to 30 years until finally the cardiovascular and nervous systems will disintegrate and collapse. Are there any questions? By frolicking too much, or maybe passed on from your mom and your daddy, you might get a really bad so down below in your private parts. Then through that sore buck and crawl up inside of you and go to sleep for 20, 30 years or more, so it's not to hurt nobody but you. But when they wake up, you can't walk, you can't breathe, you can't think. That is bad blood. That's what we're checking to see if y'all got so we can get rid of it. Oh, oh, no. No. You done. Come on. Willie. Really. 
Should I speak with you for a second? Yes, doctor. Thank you. I know I'm a good medical doctor, but I'm not so sure that I'm a good people doctor yet. Dr. Douglas, you helping people. You're a good people doctor. Evening, Eunice. See you worked a long day. The world's full of sickness. Mm. Thanks. Look, I ain't got customer asking for favors, but Well, was... you ain't used to seeing him again neither, but here we are. I was wondering, could you get a hold to a book, medicine book, tell you about that bug? Oh, the docs will answer any questions that you have. I know, but I I'd rather read up on it for myself. Well, those books are so technical. You think I won't understand it? I see what's in the library. Kayla, mm -hmm. what you quit school for? You was the smartest one in the class. I was just the pushiest. You used to drive Miss Tina's crazy, asking questions all the time, and then all of a sudden you wasn't there. I appreciate it if you get hold that book for me. See you do that step in your sleep, Willie. Yeah, man. The only thing is, now I'm wide awake. <laughs> you go ahead, old Willie Johnson. Come on, Willie, you got to think positive now. Nah. You're going to win this thing, man. Huh? That's right, because we the best. You know I told him to say the name. I got You better not forget. Because that name going to be our good luck charm. Oh, names don't give you no luck, neither do charm. What you know about charm? I know enough not to mess with him. Hey, 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 He showed me the yeah. 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 I tell you the truth, I, I, I can't believe we won the victory. You know, I, I ain't never won nothing my whole life before. Yeah, yeah. This show been so nice. Yes, First of many, really. You right, Miss Evans. Right from here, right on to the Cotton Club in Harlem, New York, USA. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, Willie got aspirations, y'all. Yes. What's wrong with that? Don't you? Oh, Miss Elvis, now you know Caleb wouldn't tell you if he had. Caleb would tell his old mama he'd been born. <laughs> I guess he figured she'd find out sooner or later. Oh, 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 oh. sick of finding Y'all yeah, need to me. quit. Man. <laughs> hey, there's our house is right over there, Miss Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, wait till everybody see this coming in. Go on, big car. 
<laughs> Come on out here, hop. There you go. Yeah, take this. Don't drop it. Well, I'll tell you something. This time the big troller, next time the record. <laughs> That's right. I like that. Hey, Mazer, you and the children come out here. Look at this. Haven't been, really. Miss Evans, boys. That's us. I just want you to know that naming your group after me. Well, we knew it would bring us luck, Miss Elvis. Well, I have never had such an honor, and I just want to thank you. Hey, it's the first of May. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Miss Elvis. Caleb, talk to you later. Thanks, Miss Elvis. Thank you. Yeah. See you, See you Miss Elvis. Love y'all. <laughs> Willie. He's very good. He really could get to the cotton club if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. You read that book you gave me? Yeah. Well, uh, I had them symptoms once, and uh, y'all give me that test to make sure about it. The Wasserman test? Mm-hmm. That test will tell whether you got it or you, or you don't. That's right. Do I or don't I? Caleb, the doctors. I'm asking you now. Yeah, you have it. So the rest of the men. Hartman, Ben, Willie. Actually, most of the men that came in. But syphilis is treatable. There's salvacin treatment, there's the mercury bugs. That'll cure it. Well, it's not a hundred percent. And there's some side effects, but there's a chance. Kind of chance. Caitlin, you're a fine case. You really are. And we're gonna make all y'all even finer. There's a whole lot more competitions to win. But, um... You won't tell them, will you? I mean, what they got. All they know is they got bad blood and we don't want to scare them. You telling me I got a right to know, why don't they got a right to know? Well, I made an exception for you. It was unprofessional of me, but what's done is done. But we don't want to scare the other men. They ain't children, they colored. Please, Caleb, the doctors know what they are doing and they think it's for the best. You think that too? Of course I do. Yes. Why are you always trying to fluster me? You ain't changed a bit, have you? All right. I keep my mouth shut. You ain't changed a bit, neither. I have seen something similar. Where? Harlem. Cotton Club. Oh, man, you lying. There ain't been no cotton club. No, I'm not. <laughs> OK, who you seen dance there? Well, I've seen Buck and Bubbles and uh, Snake Lips. Uh... Snake Hips Tucker? Yeah, that's it. Snake Hips Tucker. Hey, man, did you see Ruby Blue? Ruby Blue. I don't think so. You <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> hey, man. If you seen Ruby Blue, you wouldn't think so. You know so. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, man. He be scatting and leaving. <laughs> hey, he's a 
bed. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to get back there someday and see him. I guess you will. Hey, Miss Ella. Mm hmm? You know what this man say? He said he's been to the cotton club. Well, he can't stay ignorant all his life. <laughs> <laughs> And I wasn't lying. I was actually there. Caleb, I don't know any more books on the matter. Oh, I don't need no more. You wouldn't, uh, go out with anybody got what I got, would you? You mean go? Like to a picture go. show or get something to eat? Something like that. You you wouldn't do that, would you? No, I wouldn't go with anybody. That's what I figured. Yeah, all right. I'd go with you. I don't want you stepping out with no feel hand. You're a professional woman, a nurse. You don't see any doctors asking me out. A lawyer, for that matter. An undertaker. And he's not just a field ham. He's... Why am I making excuses? I've been trying to tell you all your life. You've got to set your sights high. Uphold the dignity of this family. Got a good sense of timing, too. Caleb. Evening, Eunice. Come on in. I got my truck me. Well, come on, it ain't gonna run off. I want you to meet my papa. Papa? This is Caleb Humphreys. Caleb, Mr. Evers. Good evening, sir. Howdy. He sat right behind me in Miss Tita's class and pulled my hair. You seen the worst. Don't go brooding on it. Caleb, are you sure this thing will make it? No, it's not. She don't take kindness disrespect. I heard this was a juke joint out here. Well, they have the liquor and all that carrying on. On oh. Saturday. Mm -hmm. I bet you my mama made better. Everybody's mama made better. <laughs> I remember me and my brother, we had the job of ladling out the sauce, you know? Sure was good, my mama's barbecue. Mm -hmm. I always wish I had a brother. Mm -hmm. I ain't my sister. My mama couldn't have any more children after me. Mm. Was that the only brother he had? Yeah, he, he, he dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just thought maybe, you know, with what you got now, it was... Oh, you want to know what he died of? But well, he ain't had what I had. <laughs> well, he didn't uh, have no disease. Was it after that? He got himself lynched. Oh, God. He had a big mouth like me. I'm sorry, I am. Uh, I didn't connect the name. Well, ain't no reason for you to do that, huh? I mean, there's plenty of Humphreys around here. Look, I'm sorry, I ain't mean to spoil you even. Got you dripping all over your dress. Look, forget the dress. You know what's funny is, I was fixing to leave here when it happened. Go where? Anywhere, USA. <laughs> Ride the rails. Chicago. You know, see what's up north or out west, California. You think it'd be any different? Sure can't be the same. I dream on that sometime. Mm -hmm. Going up to New York City and see the sights. Don't have to get off the sidewalk when a white person come along. Well, why don't you? I love what I'm doing here. The treatment, the program, knowing I'm doing good. We're the sinners. <laughs> the 
the disease is the sin, Caleb, not the people the disease. Mm -hmm. And you've smoked it four and a half. Huh? Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, God. <laughs> You think the Lord don't want me to wear this dress? Reckon not. Mm. <laughs> Is it okay? Oh, yeah, she would be all right. Yeah. After my brother. Why I had to leave school, take his place, start waiting. You were just a child. You could have kept up at home, the smartest you were. You ever tried picking cotton all day and studying at night? I tried. Kept falling asleep. Everybody can't be John Henry. You got no reason to hold back. You're fine. got some bad news. The program is being canceled. <laughs> Cancel. We've run out of money. Where? The, 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 the foundation in Chicago. I mean, they're going to be... Lost most of its assets in the crash. They've given us all they can. What about the public health service? I mean, the problem was their idea in the first place. Stamp out syphilis, you said. We're treating 1,400 patients. That's 40 injections a year for each man. There's just too much disease for the budget. Now, the idea was to use the funding to get the program started and then turn it over to the states. The states don't have any money. Who was it that said that the poor aren't affected by Wall Street? Sam, I'm in touch with Washington. We all want to see if we can salvage this. I mean, the data we've collected this last year alone is worth its weight in gold. I'm not interested in data. I'm interested in treatment. Think of what it can mean for your race, for the advancement in science. The loss here is in lives, doctor. I understand that. Look, just give me some time, OK? Let's cut staff to the bare bone, divert funds from other departments, whatever you have to do. At least buy us a few more months. And then what will I do? These men are sick. They need treatment. I know. Look, we just can't stop it like that. What do they talk like no that? We have no choice. Doctor, they trust us. No seconds. They've done a, a wonderful job. But I have to take off the program. We have to use what little money we have for treatment. Cut back on all departments. It's either staff or medicine. I understand. Yes, of course. No, you can go back to the ward. Maybe parts. Well, you haven't that. seen her already. No, I would take some medicine. You have a perfect. No, I wouldn't do that. I hope. I pray that this is just temporary and that I'll be calling you back soon. I know you do the best you can. Oh, Mr. Williams. Not that you know I'm even here. There's somebody late for Catholic night. Six months passed with no word. There were fewer and fewer treatments, and pretty soon, none at all. I tried to see him when I could, but I had to uh, take a, a job, the only one I could find working as a domestic, just like my mother. You had your supper? I had their supper. Them folks waste more food than Law Allow. We could feed the whole county. How are my boys? Your boys miss you. 
I sure miss them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Douglas worried about Willie doing his four foot knee drop. Say, it might hurt his cartilages. You mean? I know cartilage. I looked it up. But Willie took it for cartridges. Now, he think he got bullets in his knees. <laughs> <laughs> I hear they head up to D.C. Willie? Mm -mm. Dr. Douglas, Dr. Brody. For what? Can't tell by me. Douglas went up there, what, last week? Brothers brushed off the bed. Whoa. To Washington? First the bus, then the train. I don't know which was more excruciating. The ground is still moving. It's just the way I feel. So what do you think of Washington? It's grand. We have been most impressed with the work you've been doing at Tuskegee, Dr. Boris. Oh, yes. Uh, Davis, take the doctors back. Good work. Your syphilis treatment program was a model. Thank you. It's a pity the money dried up. Not a pity. It's a shame. I'd call it a crime, but we may have a solution, a new study, which is why we asked you up here. Oh, besides, wanting, of course, to meet you in person. Would you like a cool drink, Dr. Brodus? Uh, um, had a long trip. Got some soda in the office here. Sure, thank you. Are you aware of the uh, Oslo experiment, Dr. Brodus? Oslo? No. The Venereal Disease Clinic in Oslo, Norway, published a very interesting report. Now, they examined several hundred men with syphilis. They came up with fascinating data. For example, how many men died with neurological impairment as compared to cardiovascular? Fascinating. That doctor, please appear. Thank you. Here's the report. Take a look at it yourself. Um, there's an English pricey in the back. Coca-Cola, uh, root beer, orange crush, sarsaparilla, whatever. I believe, Dr. Brothers, that we have, making count, an extraordinary opportunity. They studied only white people. We believe the Negro people deserve the same chance to be studied. Studied? No, we need money for treatment. We can get money for this. The federal government will pick up the whole tab. Not, of course, the 1,400 patients that we've already been treating, but we can study 400 men with syphilis, 200 non-contagious as a control group, no more depending on outsiders. Root beer, all right? Fine, thank you. We need your help. We need Tuskegee. And now, you seem skeptical. No. Well, <laughs> maybe a little. Sam, this is for real. It's important to know whether the Negro reacts to syphilis the same way as the white man. Well, uh, suppose that um, race doesn't make a difference and that the Negro reacts the same to syphilis as the white man. Well, we'll want to know that too, wouldn't we? Uh, this is science after all. We want the truth. Regardless of race, creed, or color. The stamping out of disease. That's what this office is dedicated to. For all the people, Dr. Brodus. All of them. And you'll repeat the Norwegian study, except with a Negro male. That's right. Now, we have additional But data. it says here, Oslo was done between 1891 and 1910. That means there was no treatment then. These men were untreated. They studied untreated men with syphilis. Yes. That's right. No treatment? How could we do that? The only way to get a pure result. Uncontaminated by drugs or other medicine. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of it? The beauty of it? I'm a doctor, for God's sakes, and so are you. Our patients come before anything else. Do you think I don't know that, Sam? I've been agonizing over this. First, do no harm. 
not talking forever here. Six months, maybe a year to get the facts, then we let the facts speak for themselves. This study will make medical history. It'll wipe out centuries of ignorance about the mechanism of disease being related to race. If we do this right, I tell you, we will get the money for treatment. Federal money. Do you really believe that? Sam, this is more than just an opportunity to keep our project alive. Think of it. We will be federally financed. We'll have momentum. You know what it's like with federal programs once they get started? You can't stop them. And you can build Tuskegee into a major research center and finally prove what Negro nurses and doctors are capable of. Now, think of what good you could do with a program like that. We've already run out of medicine. Our patients aren't being treated anyway. This study is the only chance we have. And the men would be studied the same as at Oslo? Exactly the same. Periodic examinations, x-rays, blood work. We do a spinal tap to check for neurologic syphilis. We give them the works, the very best we have, but this is the only way the results can be pure. And what would the study be called? Exactly what it is study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male. The Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male. Fine. This will bring us back to treatment, Sam. You'll see. in this ward. That's all right, Nurse Parsons. Ask them for the results as quickly as possible. Thank you. You got the money. You can start back at work next week. Oh, my, my. You actually got those white people. Dr. Douglas will be them. back from Washington next week, so I want you to be ready to help him with whatever he needs. Doctor, I was born ready. Now, about the program. I can't wait to get started. We'll be just studying them. Girl, I've been studying. I know We've about been the We've been treating them. We'll just be studying them. No treatment? Not for syphilis. Oh. Why? Well, the study will bring the money for treatment. In about six months to a year. Well, what do we tell them then? I mean, what do we do? Nothing. Well, I don't understand. We've been giving them the mercury rubs, and we just don't do that? Well, we'll continue with the rubs, but we'll be using liniment instead of mercury. They won't know the difference. And with the additional money, we'll give them aspirin and tonic and vitamins, things they've never had before. I guarantee you they'll feel much, much better. Until they don't. I don't think you heard me. It won't be forever. Just six months. Or a year. And they'd be first in line for the treatment. I promise you. All right, young fella. This is going to kill the germs that are making you sick. You believe me? Well, you better believe me. I'm the doctor. Right, Nurse Evers? Yes, doctor. Doctor knows, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And he cares. Oh, yes. So you better believe me when I tell you that everything's going to be all right. Right, nurse? Right, doctor. You doing up this time of night. Remember that job I got offered in Birmingham? Mrs. Supervisor. Well, that was a whole year ago. I'm writing to see if it's still open. Why are you doing that? You're going back to work. Right back here. I don't know if I want to. You don't know if you want to. Eunice, what's the matter? What's wrong? It's a new program, Papa. They're not going to treat the men. 
Uh, not for a while, anyway, at least six months, and then they'll start back when they get more money. So? They're not going to treat the men, Papa. Well, six months ain't all that long. They jumped down, turn around, six months have been gone. Besides, they're the doctors, ain't it? You think you know better than the doctors? I think this is different. Yes, this is different. You're not going to be cleaning them toilets anymore. I seen I done took all the pride right out of it. Yeah, I wash things in cleaning toilets, Papa. Eunice. Each of us has got to bear his burden in the heat of the day. You got your burden. I got mine. We do what the Lord gives us to do. Don't you want to know why, or where, or when, even? I figured you want to tell me, you tell me. There's a supervisor job up in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about taking it. It's a step up the ladder for me. Cat got your tongue, Kayla. That ain't your characteristic. Yeah, it's just that we done got used to having you back with us. I was away for months, and y'all did just fine. But you was around. We could count on you if need be. Know where to find you. Just don't understand, huh? I do. I do, Caleb. I just... Some things you just can't keep on doing on account of... You might get twisted up in your mind. What the? If this don't clean out bad blood, nothing will. <laughs> hey, here's to all of us. We did good tonight. Yes, boy. sir. Yes, boy. All right. All right. Chili! Damn it, Chili!
Go, go, you lose. Go, 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 I knew I wasn't going anywhere. I knew that night that I would never leave. So we picked out 412 men and started over. This time around, the government gave us all the money we needed. First, we'll do some baseline blood work to screen out contagion. Only the men with nothing but syphilis will be considered for this study. Then we'll follow up with spinal taps. There may be a problem there. A lot of men don't know what a spinal tap is, and if they think it's not treatment, they won't come in. Well, they have to come in. We have to make them believe that nothing has changed. Are there any ideas? What about you, Nurse Severs? You always seem to have the answer. Um, that would no doubt. Well, Nurse Severs, I'm relying on you. If this program is to be a success, we must all put our best foot forward. Back shots. What's that? Tell them it's back shots. They know about shots. We've given them injections. If we call them back shots, they'll think it's part of the treatment. Okay, so we'll give them back shots. I don't want you to worry, Willie. Your Severs is here to take care of you. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you don't move, especially once the needle has entered the spinal canal. My what? Right. It's part of your back. Don't fret. Okay, you mustn't move then. Okay. Because the needle could damage the nerves that go into your legs. Oh, no, I can't do this. See, I need my legs, Miss Elvis. Oh, no, no Miss Elvis, I need my legs to dance on. That's I can't do this. That's why it's important for you to lay still, huh? Yeah? You be up and hopping around in those hands. Will it lay down? Come on. It's going to be okay, Will. Just don't move. we are right here with you. Come on, relax. Okay, just going to clean you up a little bit. Listen to that music. Yeah, that is so sweet. It must be high in my plan. <laughs> You know, Dr. Douglas, we got the best harmonica playing in the South, right? You never been. No, you don't say. Mm-hmm. Isn't that true? Hey, how come that needle's so big? I ain't never seen no needle that color, Miss Evers. That's a gold needle. Lay down here. It's real gold? Yeah. <laughs> it's real gold, Willie. It ain't nothing too good for the color. Don't move, Willie. Okay, now take a deep breath. <laughs> Oh, okay. chili, 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 go, chili. Step, turn, jump, leap. Very important to stay still, Willie. Willie. All right, we got it. Come on, breathe. Come on. It's over. It's over. You are a brave man, Willie Johnson. You're a champ. You know that? You're a real champ. Next. Guess I scared them all away. I guess you're going to have to round them all up again. I guess I do.
My granddaddy was a slave and they buried him just like that. Now slaves are free and we are still burying them in bags. How are we going to bring them back, nurse? I know they're scared and, and they already have enough pain in their lives, but we have to get them to see that it's for their own good. Maybe if we trusted enough to tell the truth. We made a decision, a wise decision. Now they will get treatment. <laughs> but first we have to get them back and how are we going to do that? Oh, come on now. You always have good ideas. Sometimes I don't. Money. What about money? Give them each some money. Fifty dollars. Bribe them back? It's life insurance. So they can be buried in a coffin instead of a feed bag. I can always count on you, can I? The borough money got him back all right. All but Caleb. I thought sure he was gonna move north, like you said. All this belonged to your brother. Mm-hmm. Hold it free and clear, too. So you still thinking about leaving here? <laughs> no, I ain't thinking about leaving here no more. Oh, can't leave until you finish your treatment. I ain't thinking about no treatment, either. And your family is here, I guess. I ain't thinking about my family, neither. Think about... You and me, Caleb and Eunice. I like that name, Eunice. I don't. Never did. It's got a nice in it. Eunice, you nice. <laughs> <laughs> you nice, man. You real nice. <laughs> Wait, now, you told me I was all right. Wasn't nothing I couldn't do. You are. You didn't just tell me that because it's something you don't want me to know, did no, you? No, it's not you. <sighs> Look here, Eunice. We can't keep teasing like we're still in school now. If you don't want me, I can handle it. I want you, Caleb. You know that. I'm on a different road is all. Ain't no road we can't take together, woman. I can't be with you and have a lie in my heart. What lie? You know? Come on now. Tell me what lie. You can't. That's it. That's all you got to say? You can't? <laughs> you finna throw us away for something you can't even tell me? Caleb, I care about you. No, when you care about somebody, you out in the open with them. Now, you, you call it something else. I don't know what else to call it. Sound like you calling it goodbye. I'm sorry. You sorry? First you can't, now you sorry. You sorry, because you can't. Two words. That's all we are to you? Two words? I can't tell you anymore. Yeah, well, I hope what you're getting is better than what you're giving up.
and the years went on. They had said that there would be treatment in six months, but the six months became a year, and the year became two, and then six, and you were just waiting. And in all that time, Miss Evers, you kept the secret? You never told any of the men what was being done to them? Oh, I, I wanted to tell them. I surely did. I just wanted to tell them straight out, you, you're not being treated, but you have to stick with it. So when the money come through, you'll be the first in line. But they said that the, the men wouldn't understand, and then they'd be lost to the program forever, and none of us wanted that, Senator. So we, uh, we rubbed them with liniment instead of the mercury. We gave them aspirins and, and vitamins and everything, I, you know, before you know it, how time passes, it was 10 years had passed and men just hadn't had treatment, but uh, we kept on studying them. But Miss Evers, isn't it true that as early as 1942, Penicillin had become widely available as an effective treatment for syphilis. Now, wasn't this made known to you in the study? Yes, we knew it. But there were other medical concerns, Senator. You mix it with saline solution and then you give it by injection. Now, tell the men that it, um, it stings. Actually, it hurts like hell, so maybe we should just go ahead and tell them the truth. We do that once in a while. Looks like gold. Well, it's more precious than gold. It saves lives. Now, I want to use this for the blood poisoning case first, then the pneumonia case, and then the men. When will our men get it? Doctor? Well, we're still studying that, but uh, with syphilis, there are potentially some very dangerous side effects. But they'll get it. You could mix this with distilled water, but I prefer saline solution. Now, there are a million units in each vial, which means we'll have to work out the dosage for each case. Thank you, Thank you. Excuse me. Doctor, could you look at these, please? Oh, you know Caleb now. Sometimes he just takes off sometimes. But he gonna be here. He better be. We going on soon. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh man. Willie! Oh. Are you all right? What's wrong with you, Willie? What's wrong? My legs, man, my legs. What's wrong with him? Oh, oh, man. I'm sorry, Mr. Elvis. I didn't mean to haul out like that. It's okay to haul out. Oh, oh man. Just all of a sudden. My legs just give way on me. Really? Uh, we got to I'm scared. You. I'm scared, Miss Evans. I'm losing it. No. I'm losing it. You no, know I'm losing it. Don't say that, Willie. Really. You the star attraction, Willie. Really. Yeah. You see, if you yeah. lose it, we all gonna lose. No, no, you're okay with it. It's going. It's going! No, no. Willie. Really. No. Shh, shh, shh. Not come on, Willie. Really. You can't be thinking like that. Let me work on these legs. Now, listen, what you do is you drink your quarter that way tea. At the beginning of the month, you'll be just fine. The devil fly stepping in no time at all. Yes, he will. He needs some new doctor. What you doing in that costume? Ain't no costume, it's a uniform. You join the army. I think it's my world just like it is his. I know what you're thinking, nurse. You want to know how I got in with bad blood, huh? Got me one of them penicillin shots. Get one of them in you. That Wasserman test don't show nothing bad. Army couldn't wait to take a fine specimen like me. You just gonna get yourself killed. But at least I get killed for something. Ah! That's what he need, one of them penicillin shots. He's getting the best of care. You hear me, nurse? That's nurse, us. why are you talking to all her right, like I'm all right. Hey, like, what is wrong with you? Oh, Miss Evans, you the real don't look out of. Ain't nothing standing between me and my ticket to the cotton club. Hey, Kayla? 
You coming with us? But I'm here for a little all right. Get with us. Give him a face fit. You told me that was the promise. Now there's a drug that can help and penicillin cannot undo the damage that's already been done. It could keep them from getting worse. It may also kill them. Penicillin? Some chronic syphilitics suffer a fatal allergic reaction to penicillin. It's called the Herxheimer reaction. Now that's been proven. Washington's doing a study right now to determine the degree of risk. They're giving it all over the county. Caleb Humphrey's got it. He's fine. He's in the goddamn army. Excuse my language. Caleb was lucky. Yes, penicillin is very effective in primary and secondary cases, but for those who have entered the tertiary stage, like the men in our study, it cannot cure, and it may also kill. For those men, the study needs to go to the end point. And we already have 10 years of data. And 10 years is not the end point. What it is then? We have to validate our facts through autopsy, nurse Evers. That is the end point. That will make it science, not guesswork. We're, we're gonna wait for them to die? Science is sometimes a hard task, Master Nurse Evers. You think I like not treating them? No. But we have to finish the study. We have a chance to make history here. History? Once when I was doing my residency back home, up north, I had to do two autopsies at the same time. Two young men lying next to one another, one white, one colored. And I got the, the hearts mixed up. I didn't know which, when, and where. And <laughs> I remember holding on to those hearts for a long time and examining every detail. And then finally, I just closed my eyes, put a heart in each body, and then just sew them up. That simple. Forget about making history. Think about making change. Change in the way People think, pushing past the hate, pushing past the idea of difference. We're showing, once and for all, through the nobility of, of scientific proof, 
that when it comes to disease, uh, ironically, we're all the same. Dr. Bruce, why do I feel like I'm being taken up over the hill? How's that? It's when somebody says, you see that hill there? You just got to climb that hill. And when you get up that hill, you see there's another hill beyond, even higher. And then they say, see, that's the top right up there. And so you climb again. And sure enough, you get there and there's another hill. And by then, you have just come so far, you figure you might as well go on the rest of the way. That's been taken up over the hill, Dr. Brodus. Well, you come of your own free will. I thought I was doing good. You are. You are doing good. Don't ever let go of that. You're doing good for those men, and you are doing good for the Negro people. Why can't I look them in the face without crying? We all want to cry, I mean, but we have to be strong, and you are a strong woman. And I know that you'll do what you are called to do, Nurse Excuse me, nurse. We're here to get this man a penicillin shot. Name? Uh, Willie. Willie Johnson. Can't help you. How you doing? Why not? Name's on the list. <clears throat> what list is that, ma'am? Tuskegee study. No penicillin allowed. How come I can't get a shot like Caleb got a shot? I, won't, I mean, I could. Never mind, Willie. Come on. We just go somewhere else. Won't help. They sent the list to everybody. Don't worry about it now. We're gonna go down here. I'm gonna carry that city. I mean, I ain't never done nothing nobody, yeah, but you got a place. Yeah, I'm gonna carry it over there now. Willie! What'd you do? They don't wanna give me the penicillin in here. Caleb's gonna take me to a place where I can get it. Oh, they say I'm on some kind of list. Oh, Willie, that shot could have killed you. I'm still standing. You're just lucky. Penicillin could be dangerous for him. Well, why me and not him? You're different. Why? I don't know. Nobody knows, but we can't take that chance. Listen to me, Willie. Yeah. It could have exploded your heart. Caleb, you ain't said nothing about my heart. He don't me. know. I know. Go ahead on with her, Willie. Caleb, you said you were going to take me to get the... Never mind about what I said. Now. Willie, Go ahead on with it's for your own good. She's going to see to it you don't get it no way. Caleb. Yeah, I know. The doctors know best. Boy, they got a good one when they found you, nurse. I got a train to catch in there. Don't get yourself shot. Be lucky they let me near a gun. Hey, Willie. Yeah. Down some down, yeah? Bye, Caleb. He's a good man, Miss Ellis. Yeah, yes. Miss Ellis. Yeah. Ben is feeling poorly. He got trouble with his with his eyes and his legs, too. Now, that only leaves me and Hardman for the jelly. Hey, Miss Elvis. You think I'm still gonna make it to the cotton club? I'm gonna get me a new hat and sit right up on the front row. You telling me straight? I'm gonna see you through this, Willie. You hear me? I ain't left you yet, and I'm not leaving you now. We're going to see this through together. Hey, you know, I've been thinking. Hmm? You know about the cotton club. You know what? They don't allow no toilets in the audience, only on the stage. I guess I just get me a chair and sit up there on the stage. 
I had heard that Caleb had been sent overseas, but a long time went by with no word from him, so I had started to think that he'd gotten himself killed. Meanwhile, I did my best, but the man got steadily worse. Hey, no. Hey, no. The disease took their bodies and their minds. Hey, no. Hodman started hey, thinking no. he could cure himself. We're gonna do this, man. Hey, no. Hey, no. We're gonna do this, man. Hodman? Hey, no. Hey, no. Hodman. Hey, there. What you doing out here, Miss Evers? Looking for you. Where's your family? They, they gone to my mama's. They say I ain't no good for them like this. You need to come in for your treatment. You and them friends of yours. No. I got my own treatment right here, Miss Evers. See? Just burn these spider webs. Look hard into the smoke. It's good for the eyesight, too. That sounds fine to me. It seem like it'd be twice as powerful if you do that and your treatment. They work together, kind of feed one another. I think so, huh? I know so. Twice as powerful? Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on back with me now. You done blowed enough smoke for the day. As bad as Hobbin was, Ben was the first to fall. Tell me you don't recognize the old girlfriend. How you doing? Oh, I guess I'm dying, Miss Elvis, the way these people are all tiptoeing all around me all the time. You ain't good yet, Ben. You're a tough customer. No, I just feel all woe down all the time, Miss Elvis. Well, I got something to raise you right up. It's from the United States government. It's for me. Mm hmm You and all the other men. It is a certificate of appreciation uh, and ten whole dollars. A they, dollar for every year you've been in the program. They paying us for having the bad blood. They showing the appreciation for what your boy's done. Well, I ain't done nothing, Miss Ellis, except get sick. You know, I ain't had this much cash money since we got that fifty dollars for the very uh, I'm going blind too. Ain't that a treat? Ain't nothing more you can do for me, is it? We tried everything we can. I know you are. There ain't a day go by. We all know, Miss Elvis. Hey. Mm -hmm. See, you didn't make us sick. And you done all that you can to make us well. Can't do no more than that, Miss Ellis. You gonna be okay, Ben? No. No, I ain't, Miss Elvis. And I appreciate you saying that. Miss Elvis, mm -hmm. you wait till you see that coffin old Ben to picked out for itself. Oh, it's red, it's blue, it's green, it's yellow. There's a doozy, Miss Elvis. You're gonna be real proud. You're gonna be so proud. What are you doing now? I look like I'm doing. Do you know what time it is? You're keeping me awake with all that chopping. 
You always say you can't sleep anyway. Well, tonight I was sleeping, sleeping good. Ah. Eunice, if you're mad about something, don't take it out on the wood. Go after what you're mad about. Ben's dead, Papa. Hobbin's going insane. I'm mad at the world. Well, you ain't going to fix the chopping wood. All you're going to do is keep me up all night. Suppose there's nothing else you can do. If you believe that, you'd never become a nurse in the first place. I'm going to give me some milk. You want some? Hmm. Be sure to warm it. What you got there? Turpentine. You finna feel the paint off some? I'm making me some new medicine. Yeah. I hear turps is good for moles, but I got something new. Penicillin. For me? You didn't want us taking that stuff. Well, I think you need it now, Hartman. I do think you need it. Why? Them hanks you've been seeing. I don't want them bothering you. <laughs> you think they ain't there. I think you need penicillin. But now I gotta warn you, you could have a bad reaction. Chances are you won't, but... You gotta know that going in. You think I should do it? As long as you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing, Harvey? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. How bad that bad reaction? It's bad enough. But now I'm gonna stay right here with you. You okay after 12 hours? You're free and clear. All right. Just tell me what I gotta do.
goodness. Yeah. Come on. He's all gone now. Okay. Baby skipped I... on home. Yeah. I told you. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. Come on. I killed him. What you might expect, he died from swallowing 32 ounces of turpentine. But there were certain other elements consistent with the Herxheimer reaction. What are the elements? Nothing you could prove out for sure. But the penicillin could have killed him. Well, there's no real proof, just an indication. Officially, I'm calling it death by self-inflicted poisoning. But you know what you did? Stealing medicine? You go to jail for that. Giving that man that injection violated the protocol of the study and could have disgraced the institute. The well, I have to, Nurse Evers! I know that there are people just waiting out there for us to fail, hoping that we will fail so they can keep saying that Negroes are stupid, incompetent, good for nothing, inferior. But I'm willing to forget what you did. The man was in a state of dementia. It was just a matter of time. You are Doctor. their nurse, Miss Evers. Doctor, we're sacrificing them for something I can't even stand up for. Yes, I can't keep yes, looking in their we faces. are. For reasons they will never understand. For reasons that are greater than any one of them. The greater good for the race. I'm not going up over that next hill. Oh, yeah, where are you going to go? They don't just let us go where it's nice and flat. It's all hills for us. We either climb or we stay at the bottom. That's the only choice they give us. Now, you knew that when you became part of the program. Now, if you want to leave, that's your privilege, but the men will miss you. I stayed. I didn't back out. I went up over that next hill. And sure enough, there's another hill after that. And another. You see, Senator, they still needed my help. I couldn't save them, but there were things that I could do for them. Things that I owed them. Simple comforts, like knowing that somebody cared. The war ended and we went right on taking care of them. Lying, yes, but taking care. Hey, Miss Elvin. Mm hmm? Come on, Doc. Tell her where you've been. You know where you've been? I know, we've been up north. He went back to the cotton club. Cotton club? Yeah. Well, I had to go to a meeting in New York, so I thought I'd stop in and get old Willie a report. Say he saw Ruby Blue. Ruby Blue, you saw him? Say he was scatting and, and leaping and, and doing the stair dance. He said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that right down. Like that? Well, sort of. You mean sort of? What was he doing that was that was different? Well, he was moving both feet in different rhythms at the, at the same time, kind of kind of like this. So he's like two different people dancing on the same leg. Yeah. Man, 
that's nice. That's new. Hey, I could use that. What do you got stairs around here? I know. Yeah. Excuse me, Doc. That was nice of you. But he shouldn't be doing stairs. He might hurt himself. Willie, come on, me, Doc. Come on, right. Come on, right. Okay. I just need time, Doc. I understand. I just need a little more time. I, I'll get it, you know. I just take a little rest. Come on. Yeah. Hey, Doc. What, what did you say? Now, he was dancing on different rhythms, on different legs at the same time. That's right. We well, just about out there. Oh, come on, now, Doc. I ain't have it like that. Hey, but you know, you didn't dance too bad. Oh, go on. Hey, let me see you cut a step. Go on, cut one. Go ahead. some new tires on your car. There's a wall on. Yeah, I heard. I see you got yourself some medals. Well, they ain't really medals. Just tell where I've been. Africa, Sicily, Italy. You know, they got colored folks in Africa. You joshing me. No, colored all over. You looking good, Eunice. You look good too, Caleb. You back here for good now? Well, Corina's kids grown enough to look after the place they own self now. You just come back to see him. I come back for you. You know, most folks think that uh, the war is fighting and shooting, carrying on. It really ain't nothing but a whole bunch of sitting around and waiting. Did a whole lot of thinking while I was over there. See? They say thank is good for the soul. Thought a lot about you and me and how we messed it up, how I let you get away. No, you didn't let me, I did it. It was a mistake, mm -hmm. what it was. You don't make mistakes. Come on now, Eunice, don't go skating around on me. Now listen. I don't want us to make the same mistake again. Caleb, we haven't seen each other for five years. I haven't heard from you in five years. I'm back now. That's all that counts. I got a job up north. As soon as I get discharged, steel making plant outside Chicago. It's a tune buddy of mine who got me in the union. They got hospitals all around Chicago. You could get a job. They always need nurses. We could have a real nice life. Give me a minute here. I'll say one thing for you, Caleb Humphrey. You know how to lay it on a girl. Here, feel this. I got the palpitations. You want to sit down? Hmm? Mm. Mm. I can't. What, you can't? You still saying that to me? I can't leave here. You could stay. No, I can't. Not even for you. My life here is over. Eunice, I got to go somewhere where I got a chance now. 
I want you to come with me. How long has it been now? 10, 12 years? You've done all you could. Eunice, nobody could do more than what you've done. You've been there for them day and night. The program's not finished. There's well, a lot of work. What more can you do? I can be here for them. And watch them die, is that it? Hold their hands till they go blind, cripple, or crazy. Put your hat on for funerals. You remember what you said once? You said that the men were drowning. They dying with you. Ain't no more Miss Evers boys. Miss Evers boys is through. Ain't nothing holding you here, woman. You just don't know what it's like. What I got to know? I know I want you with me. I know you want to be with me. Known it all these years. Eunice, we've been foolish to stay apart. Oh. Why? Because your daddy's looking? Mm -hmm. All he's going to see is that his little girl's a grown woman. Where'd you prove, Caleb? you want me. I have always wanted then you. Then come north with me and let's make a life together. I, I owe him Caleb. You paid already. You don't no, owe... I could never pay him enough. You missed something real good, didn't you? Let's go see what time my train is leaving. Caleb. I am so happy you didn't get yourself killed. Me too. How come we didn't get it, Eunice? In a cell. You're part of a government study. That ain't no answer. No, the study was the proof that the, the doctors needed the proof. The doctors are dedicated, and they know what's best. Best was penicillin. you're a nurse. They have nursing up north, too. You've got a chance here, Eunice. He's a good man. All those medals on his chest. And you're still soft for him. I could see you. Leave me could... alone, Papa. I ain't left you alone since you was a baby. I, I expect me to start now. you got a lot of life left. Eunice, don't let it all get away. I can't, Papa. You can't. I can't. You will. I can't. I cannot. You always tell me to do what's right, don't you? Well, what I'm doing is right. It's, it's got to be right, Papa. It was right. It had to be right. Men kept dying, but they, they would have died anyway, wouldn't they? I, I prepared a report every spring on the number of them remaining. 412 in 1946, 360 10 years later. And then 
Last year, when the papers got a hold to the story, it was 127 left. Of the 412 that we started with, 127 were left. And of Miss Eva's boys, it was just two. That's Willie and um, Caleb. I had heard that he got the job up north. He never married. So that brings us to Washington, D.C. I guess none of us ended up where we thought we would. I simply don't understand, Miss Evers. Much as we may appreciate your personal sacrifice, the fact remains that patients with a potentially fatal disease went untreated when treatment was available. It was for the greater good. Who's good, Miss Evers? Who has benefited? We proved that there's no difference between how blacks and whites respond to syphilis. The benefit of that... If they were white, Miss Evers, if they were white, would these men have been treated as they were? You should know better than anyone. Yes, I do, Senator. If they had been white, your public health service would never have agreed to, to do this study in the first place. They wouldn't have dared. If they had been white, you congressmen wouldn't have voted every year for 40 years. If they had been white, somebody would have said something before now because everybody knew what was going on. It wasn't no secret. But because they were black, nobody cared. Because they were black, you, the U.S. government thought that they were expendable. Now you're trying to push the blame off on me and the fine doctors who did the best we could for the choice you gave us to make. Whether to leave those men in neglect or to give him the best care that was within our power to give. Nursing them men was my life, mister. We're not trying to blame you, Miss Harris. We understand you are acting under orders. Orders from Dr. Brodus and uh, the others. I went up that hill on my own. I can carry the weight of the burden by myself. But Miss Evers, what in the world did you think you were doing? Honoring my oath as a nurse, Senator. I love those men. They were susceptible to kindness and I gave them all that I had. <clears throat> Oh, you sure could dance. Feet went faster than the music. Come on, come on. This is over. Oh, 
Just still take me 